literally the only person on YouTube playing this. I'm tempted by the game based multi. Okay, so I have to say, before I give you my honest, my honest response to whether or not you should buy this game, I loved the original Brigandine, The Legend of Force in it back on the PlayStation One so much that back in. Uh, you know, back, back six years ago in 2016, I wanted a sequel so bad that I started working on my own spiritual successor to the original Brigandine. And I've spent the last six years working on that project. So, I'm biased when I say Brigandine is an amazing game. And this game does have some improvements over The Legend of Four Sina. So I I am enjoying it a lot. And the 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 complaints I have so far about Legend of Renersia are minor and primarily just about how much exposition and story they tried to cram down your throat at the start of the campaign. Which if you're just here for the gameplay, you can literally just skip. So if you're just if you're just wanting a really good tactical, hex-based conquest game, it's an amazing game, and you can just skip all the story if you don't want to sit there and read through all the exposition. And right now, for the opening week, for the, the release week, it's 15% off. So I really do think that it's a good... It's a good game for the money right now. If you're expecting a challenging game that's going to give you hundreds and thousands of hours of entertainment, it's probably not unless we're able to mod it to improve the AI, because I've been really just half-hearted playing it. I've, been, I've mostly been talking on tangents the entire time I've been playing the game so far. And I've still found a lot of success. I think I've lost one battle. And I'm only half paying attention to what I'm doing. So it's not going to be a challenging game. But it is very fun. Although, once again, I may be biased, so I, I just wanted to make sure that was completely clear. Okay, so as far as how many hours it has, the original Brigandine Legend of Forsina uses the same formula as this one. And I've been playing it for more than 20 years and I still enjoy it. So does that does that answer your question? <laughs> like I I literally uh, on my on my Android phone I have a PlayStation emulator, and I keep Brigandine Legend of Force in a, on my phone so that anytime I'm like at a dentist or doctor's appointment or anything and sitting in the waiting room, I play Brigandine Legend of Force in a. And it's, it's a very replayable game. There's a lot of customization to the different, uh, the different leaders you have, the different knights that you're employing. You can play the same nation completely differently every single time. You could literally just change what knights you make into what classes every single time. You can change what monsters you use. Um, to make it more challenging, whenever I was playing the Brigandine Legend of Force in a game over and over and over again, I would do little challenges where I, you know, only use weak monsters or only use, you know, this type of champion, use no magic, no heals. Like, there's a lot of different ways you can make it harder for yourself to challenge yourself to, to really enjoy the game. But the AI is really dumb. <laughs> that's, that's the biggest complaint that anyone ever has about Brigandine Legend of Renersia specifically. The AI was actually better in the PlayStation 1 game. I mean, okay, so the, the problem, yeah, you're your question was that uh, the comments seem to say that it's a dumbed-down, simplified form. That's not true at all. Um, so, the... 
The number of class options you have is increased. The number of customization for your different, you know, your, your different battle groups, whether you have, you know, different units of different types, whether you want to go with a flanking party or if you want to go with, you know, really heavy magic and support unit, that's just as versatile as Brigandine, Legend of Forsena, and Grand Edition, which Grand Edition was just a remake of Legend of Forsena. And it is really hard to say that it's a dumbed-down version of a series that only has one actual game so far. If they're specifically talking that the two things that I did notice is that the battlefield... Or not the battlefields, the uh, the world map that you're playing on for for the, the Brigandine Legend of Forsena, there was a lot more open field where there were like multiple castles that were each connected to several other castles and there were very few paths on the original Legend of Force in a map where it was just a straight shot with like maybe at one point two that branch out and come back so just when I get back to the world map I'll actually show you exactly what I'm talking about they did streamline the layout of the territories in such a way that it is easier to just push through and conquer entire areas but that doesn't necessarily make it like dumbed down or easier it just changes the dynamic because in this game there are people and classes that have super powerful moves that can just one shot monsters so even though the path you're taking to conquer a ter uh, to, to conquer a nation is more streamlined it's just as dangerous as it was in Force of Okay, here actually I can show you the, what I was talking about here. So you can see, I'll actually get my mouse over here. You can see all the paths on the map, right? So this stretch through here, it's basically too wide. So all you really need is two teams of three to push through here continuously until they're all conquered. There's never a point where you need more than two teams of three to conquer this entire stretch. Through here, you only need one team of three to conquer all of this. Through here, you only need two teams of three. And only whenever it splits off like that. So you could just leave one defender and push through the rest. Like, the majority of this map is made up of one or two wide pathways. So the only thing you ever need when you're fighting on a single front is, like, two armies. Whereas Legend of Forsena had several places throughout the map where if you didn't have at least nine knights, you just couldn't push through that area. Specifically through the most, most of the center of the map. Was, it was a lot of areas where there were three or more territories connected to each other where you, if you push through, you just had to be, you know, split to be able to keep it all under control. So that is the only way in which this game is dumbed down at all, to answer the previous question. Other than that, in every way, it's a little bit more... Well, in every way except for the AI. It's, it's more developed, it's got more features. It's just the AI is the one... The AI and the world map are the are the two things that could be said to be weaker than Legend of Force. And everything else, from what I've seen, is an improvement. Yeah, no, exactly. Like it's it's just an opinion thing. If somebody says this game is a dumbed down version of Le uh, Legend of Force, and they're just they just opinion don't like it. They don't like the changes. That's it. Miss are I, I don't what what do you what exactly do you mean by missables? Are there missables in this game? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Not sure what you mean by missables. In any case, that's only the second defeat out of all the battles we've fought. Not too bad. As far as I understand it, there's nothing that you can miss. Um, but as far as, like, a specific thing happening that if you don't do it at a certain time, you can never do it, I don't think that's a thing. I can't say for sure because this is literally my first time playing Legend of Renarcia, but I can say for a fact that if you if you played Forsena, the, the original Brigandine, there was never a thing that you couldn't just quest for later.
Um, and plus, most of the things in this game are just monsters and items. Uh, as far as story stuff goes, I really don't know if there's anything missable. Um, I know that if you, like, try... Yeah, you just purchased it. It's a good game. Like, it's fun. See, a lot of people have their own gauges of whether or not a game is worth the money. Mine's very simple. Is it fun? If so, I'm happy. <laughs> like... <laughs> I don't need to be challenged by every game. Now, yes, if a game is challenging and balanced and really compelling and deep, I will I will be willing to put hundreds of hours into it. Whereas if it's fun but not very deep, I'll probably only put in a couple dozen hours at most. Um, or if, if the game is largely story driven and I just don't like the story, I'll play for sometimes two or three hours and then be like, eh, nah. But as far as like tactical games go, I've, I've never played a tactical game or a strategy game that I've just been like, this is, you know, this is not fun in any way. I can't even see what they were going for. Like, there's always been something interesting to glean from it. Okay, see, this is exact, exactly what I was talking about. We just got done with this whole backstory of the two characters, and now it's going to go into more exposition about this group, and like, I just want to get back to the game. <laughs> like, I, yes, I appreciated that one little backstory of the two di or of the two commanders in my army. That was cool. I was fine with that. But I don't need to know about how they are able to grow from baby to boy to adult or whatever. 